All right, Kristen. So looking on your website and looking at the book, The Comfort Zone, it makes me think outside the normal way I really think. And I actually like that. I like the fact that I have to think about things differently because as someone who tries to really embody a growth mindset, a beginner's mindset that I know nothing, I don't know what I don't know. Uh, I try to always keep different perspectives on, on things. And this one, this one's really tough. This one's really challenging. Learning to grow inside my comfort zone because, you know, we're all taught that the only way to grow is to get, or one of the ways to grow, excuse me, is to get outside of our comfort zone. So can you dive a little deeper and give us a little more context on how we can grow inside our comfort zone? So the idea that I'm offering, and I love when you said all of the thinking outside the box, because I'm totally that kind of person, is actually expanding your comfort zone because it's not a static place. The goal is actually to get comfortable with more and more things. And it's really a great outlook because you're approaching things from a more calm state, right? And so... Really, I came up with this because I live over half of my life outside of my comfort zone because I really wanted success and I really wanted to change my circumstances. And so I followed that adage. And while you get success, you can be very successful. It always ends in bouts of burnout. And so I would continually burn out. And eventually I thought there has to be a better way because this just doesn't work. It's not sustainable. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And to all those people uh, that are listening, if you are interested in checking out her book, The Comfort Zone, you can get on Amazon.com. And I'm going to drop the link to her website, her Instagram, and also to purchase the book in the podcast notes. But this is this is a very interesting topic. You know, here on the Live Better Now podcast, it's all about mental health. It's all about mindset. Uh, and on more of a macro level, I guess, personal growth and self-development. How can we be better people? How can we strive to do more? How can we make a bigger impact? Or how could we savor life more? How could we be more present? And that is a very interesting out-of-the-box uh, perspective on our comfort zone. So it's almost like you're pushing the walls of your comfort zone and, and like you said, expanding your comfort zone. So without giving too much detail, about what's inside the book, because obviously they can really um, apply a lot of the lessons if they go through the entire book. But what are some of the ways uh, that these people, these listeners that are listening right now and how I can take some of this to expand my comfort zone? Yeah. So at the edge of our comfort zone, I call it the growth zone. And so the goal really is to continue expanding it because technically we want to experience new things. That's like innately and designed into us. We want to stretch our potential, right? And so in the book, I have so many different tools, but one of my favorites is creating a comfort zone vision board. And I really love that one because oftentimes people create vision boards, but they usually don't attain the things on them because when they look at it, they're like, wow, that seems really hard to accomplish. Like, I don't even know if I can get there. And they create all this resistance and this negativity, right? Because they're looking at it and they're not feeling good about it. They're kind of seeing that they're not there yet and then focusing on that. But what's really cool is when I created the comfort zone vision board, a lot of the things that I were outside of my comfort zone are now inside of it. So I have stretched mm -hmm. myself to achieve those things. And so in the center of the comfort, so my take on comfort zones, vision boards, sorry. So my take on vision boards, it's actually circular, the comfort zone vision board. And there's three rings. And at the center, you actually put the things you've already achieved. So things that you once thought you couldn't achieve or couldn't have, you prove to yourself you could. Like make $5,000 a month consistently working on my own. Yeah. Okay. Or even like your health, you know, health okay. achievements or whatever that looks like to you that you once thought was not even achievable or was way outside of your comfort zone that is now inside your comfort mm -hmm. zone. You already have it. And it's so important to do that because then on days when you don't feel good enough, you can look at that and say, wow, I can have the things I want. I can achieve big things. And so in the center, you put the things you've already achieved. Then in the second ring, you put the things that are just outside of your comfort zone that it may only take a few steps to achieve. And it feels like you're almost there. 
And then in the third ring, those are those big, bold dreams that you want, but you don't even know how you could achieve that you feel are way outside of your comfort zone. Number one podcast in the world, New York Times right. bestselling author, seven figure coach. Yes, I love that. Okay. Yeah. And you put those in there. And for some people who might be listening, there might be some things that people have told them they never could achieve. Maybe they just have failed so many times that they have buried that dream deep down. It just seems so unrealistic. Get that back out there and put that in that third ring. And so the goal is to bridge the things that you want so that it becomes part of your comfort zone as you stretch it. I see exactly where you were going with that. It's like to expanding the circles, you yeah. know, like turning the bigger circle into the smaller circle. Yeah. And and the circle just gets larger and larger. You know, I, I love to interview experts and authors like yourself and get some applicable exercises that the audience can apply to their life right here, right now. So besides creating their own uh, comfort zone circle or what, what's the right term for it? Comfort zone vision board, comfort but zone. the vision board is a circle. Okay. Yeah. So, so leaving this podcast after you listen to this podcast by creating your own comfort zone vision board, but what are some ways that people could think a little bit differently or what are some exercises they, they can do on a daily basis or a weekly basis to expand their comfort zone? Because, you know, I'm always thinking about ways on how I can get out of my comfort zone, whether it's like booking a trip to Bali or, you know, traveling to a country I've never been to before, or, you know, uh, talking to people, introducing myself to people in the line of Starbucks. And like that to me has become comfortable, right? So it's like, I used to every single day, walk up to a stranger and say, Hey, I know this is really weird, but I play this game with myself where I have to introduce myself to one person each and every single day and tell them what I do. Do you mind if I bend your ear for 30 seconds? Most people, because I come off very unthreatening, my my palms are open, they're not in my pockets, you know, I'm, I seem like a nice guy, whatever, uh, they'll be like, sure, what do you do? I'm like, I'm a life coach. I help people get sober, I help people lose weight, I help people start businesses, I help people get specific around their goals, and then create an action plan and implement accountability. Like, oh, that sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, here's my business card, hope you have a great day, give me a shout if uh, you want to dive a little deeper, right? So that has now become natural to me. I now have zero shame, zero discomfort walking up to anybody and starting this conversation. Right. So that has now become like my comfort zone. And, and I love, you know, I, I'm looking at your Instagram, by the way, all the people that are listening, you can follow Chris on Instagram at positive Kristen. That's Kristen with a K. And your bio says you help people boost their mood and expand their comfort zone. And like, you know, I, after you do something that's scary and after you get out of your comfort zone a little bit, you realize it wasn't even that bad. It wasn't even that bad. Right. And I know that was kind of a long winded question, but um, I would love for you to expand on that a little bit and how that ties into what you do. Yeah. So what came to mind was when I started public speaking. And so at first, um, and I can talk about the growth process here, but public speaking was way outside of my comfort zone. But just a few weeks ago, I think two weeks ago, I spoke at a conference with Hay House, my publisher, and there was hundreds of people in the audience. And I loved it. I felt so comfortable, but I had never done it before. And so how I did that, and people are really like, wow, you're really taking this to the next level, doing things that people are usually so fearful about. But what I did was I acclimated to it. And then the book, I talk about this. It's really the process of learning something new and growing. And when we know that there's a process, then we can actually do something without giving up or without feeling really anxious. And so just like I acclimated to public speaking, anyone can do this. So there was a three-step process in acclimation. And that's exactly how we grow our comfort zone. So the first phase is that we do feel a little uncomfortable and it's a little unfamiliar. But the key here is, is that it's something that we want to do. We're being drawn to do it. And so when we started, it's like, mm, it's a little uncomfortable and unfamiliar, but I'm going to do this. And it's a very short phase because with practice, just like when you were coming up and talking to people, you eventually get familiar with it. Right. And maybe you're still a little uncomfortable, 
But over time, as you continually do it, it becomes part of your comfort zone where you're familiar with it, you're comfortable with it, and you want to do more around that, right? So you're expanding. And it's so important to know that there's this growth phase because then we don't want to give up. Oftentimes, people will live in that first phase of unfamiliar and uncomfortable, and they think, yeah, this is a sign of progress. I'm going to make it. I'm going to get through this, you know? And, or even the second phase, and they're just constantly in this, uh, these uncomfortable, stressful feelings, and they're not making any progress. So I like to think of it that way and to know where I am in a situation. And yeah, I believe that's totally part of my comfort zone because it's natural for us to feel a little uncomfortable, but not all the time and on a daily basis. Right. You know, when people think about getting out of their comfort zone and, you know, I'm just thinking about couple of my clients who, you know, I try, I wouldn't say I try really hard, but I stress the fact that getting out of your comfort zone, doing things differently that you're not used to doing is very important to think differently or become aware of something you're not aware of or learn something or grow. And I'm thinking about some people that I know in my life as well, that they just shut down when they think about getting out of their comfort zone. Like, no, no, not even a chance. No, 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 no. I, I cannot, Zach, no, I cannot do that. No, I cannot do that. I cannot do that. Um, how it feels start- overwhelming. But when you break it down and you know that these phases are temporary, for example, public speaking. I started with my thoughts around public speaking. I journaled. What, did, what were the limiting beliefs that I had around public speaking? What were some bad memories from when I was a child that prevented me from continuing to speak? And I had a ton of memories, even from when I was like five years old, you know, 10 years old. And then even in high school where I had very negative experiences getting in front of a camera and I journaled about those and then I reprogrammed them to better thoughts. And I started there. And so when you're starting something where you feel like you're stepping out of your comfort zone, you break it down. You look at the thoughts around that and why you feel uncomfortable And then you make yourself feel more comfortable about it because you're not going to die doing what you want to do. You know, it's not actually a scary thing. And so first adjusting the thoughts, but then taking action and practicing and doing things that are in alignment that can get you to that goal. Yeah. And so when we break it down like that, it doesn't feel overwhelming. Right. So I'm going to ask a personal question real quick, actually. What's something that's uh, out of your comfort zone? Something well, public speaking was out of my comfort zone, right? And then I just did that. So, hmm. So right now, on my comfort zone vision board, I have um, New York Times bestselling author because I haven't achieved that yet. But I know the bridge and the steps that it's going to take for me to get that. So it's just over time, it's going to happen, right? Yeah. Now, well, I'm going to ask you a question also. As a uh, on your comfort zone vision board of becoming a New York Times bestselling author. And I don't know how many copies that have to be sold to be a New York Times bestselling author. And obviously there's people who stay on the leaderboard longer than others. And and just getting on the leaderboard is really the the pinnacle of achievement. That is like the pedestal that all of us authors want to hit, right? And uh, I don't know, do you have any context around how many copies you have to sell to be on, be on that list? There's, there's speculation between like... 5,000 to 15,000 in a week, I think, right? Okay. So, yeah. I mean, that is more than attainable for both you and I. Yeah. More, more than attainable. So my question for you is, what are the daily micro goals or what are the steps that need to be taken to become a New York Times bestselling author? And as I'm asking this question, I, I'm going to answer it myself real quick and I, I want to get your opinion as well, but I'm like, you know, writing, becoming a better author, right? There's so many, there's so many uh, original thoughts these days that it's very hard to come up with an original thought. However, the first thing I noticed when I went to your book and I went to your page is this is an original thought. You have something here. You have something here for sure. And that, that is a, nothing less than and a huge compliment. Um, you have something here because it is original because I've never even thought about, you know, you know, growing in your comfort zone. But what do you think are your daily tasks or weekly tasks or or quarterly goals that you need to hit to make sure you're pushing the envelope to eventually become a New York Times bestselling author? Yeah. So as we were talking about with speaking, the more I I speak in front of people 
and get to know them on that kind of basis, I feel like the more copies I'm going to sell because I'm connecting with them directly and they are seeing how genuine and authentic I am. So that was something that I built and bridged up to because I just thought, hey, you know what? I'm just a writer. You know, I'm not really like a, a speaker. That's not my thing. And these were just limiting beliefs that I had. And so it was like, okay, I like this. And so doing workshops, more workshops in the future and and master classes and courses, you know, getting front of, in front of the camera. So these are things that I'm currently working on to bridge to that. Good. So it's really just uh, um, like, uh, is it outreach? No, uh, exposure. It's exposure, more exposure to more people that like books. Awesome. Yeah, I think too, just connecting in a different way. When people read what you're writing, there's so many people that write today that I think once they connect with you directly, either in person or on camera like this, um, they just get to know who you are on a deeper level. Yeah. Interesting. What, you know, this should have been the first question, but what gave you this idea of growing inside your comfort zone? What made you write this book? So in the book, I get very vulnerable about my rock bottom story. A decade and a half ago, I was at rock bottom. I was in bed for two weeks straight. I had just lost another business and I was an eBay power seller at the time. This was a decade and a half ago, but eBay was like Amazon is today. And I couldn't keep up with the orders. And so I lost eBay, shut my store down. My doctor also told me, hey, your health is, you know, out of whack. You're never going to have children. Like my hormones were so out of balance because of all the stress of always pushing and forcing myself outside of my comfort zone, doing new things, never allowing myself to relax. And I was bedridden for two weeks straight and it was either give up on life entirely or try something new, Kristen. And that's when I started trying something new and I stopped shaming myself for doing things that felt good for taking time for rest, you know, um, not working really, to be honest, not hustling, not just trying to survive and chase success. But by not chasing success, I found success because I started taking care of myself. I started connecting with loved ones again. And I found this really beautiful flow But if I could pinpoint it to one thing, it was actually allowing myself to feel safe in each moment. And the comfort zone is very much about that because you eliminate fear, you eliminate stress and knowing that someone else has got your back. For me, it's a very spiritual, deeply connected experience. And so knowing that the weight is not all on me, it's not all up to me. I can relax and ease up a bit and things are going to work out even better unbelievable yeah no that you know it usually happens from a rock bottom story where like we hit rock bottom and then we bounce back and it wasn't an easy journey for you i'm sure and there were a ton of challenges and adversity along the way right but this is something you're passionate about this is something that means a lot to you gives you a lot of purpose and it's something that the world can definitely benefit from for sure and there's a lot of people that you know, our, their, their, their small comfort zone is like this big, right? It's the size of a dime. And we need, to get, we need to get for it to be the size of the earth. What do you tell people that, you know, like me, for example, I, I feel like um, everything is in my comfort zone. I, no. I, I, you know, I, I went from running one mile to just signing up for an Ironman. You know, I've, you know, traveled to a lot of third world countries, either by myself or just like with someone else who I've met on the internet. Um, you know, I, I, I tend to, whenever I make money, I just invest all of it and then go try to get another check. Like, you know, I, I I don't really rely on like safety nets or anything like that. And I put all my chips on the table. And so, you know, does this concept of comfort zone apply to people like me? Well, you said that you feel like everything's in your comfort zone. So that's your personality to like, experience life and to feel comfortable doing it. And so that's like your mindset really. And that's the ultimate mindset. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie free solo, Alex Honnold, he's a rock climber. He uses no harnesses or anything. And he says that he harnesses his comfort zone to do it. And that's how he combats fear. And that if he didn't, 
he would die. And so that's the way we should be living is in that comfort zone and using that and harnessing that on a daily basis. Yeah. Interesting. Love that. Kristen, it, it was so great to get to get to know you and to learn the concept of the comfort zone. And to all those people out there that are listening on Audible, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, uh, I'm going to drop uh, Kristen's Instagram, all her socials, link to her website, and obviously link to the comfort zone, create a life you really love. Create a life you really love with less stress and more flow. Um, if you haven't already left an honest review on the podcast, go ahead, scroll to the bottom, leave an honest review. We recommend five stars. Kristen, it was amazing connecting with you, learning about the comfort zone and uh, look forward to connecting with you again soon. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Zach.